Hello, welcome, beautiful people of the world, beautiful, innovative CEOs. I am so excited to get started as folks are coming in. Uh, I am Greg Rosner, and this session, this masterclass is a live discussion. Hello, welcome, Paul. These are the, the five things CEOs get wrong about marketing and how they turn around a sales slump. I'm excited to get started. Hope you guys are also. It's going to be great. Yes, it's going to be awesome. We're going to make it so that you won't be able to look at your website ever again the same or your sales, your marketing the same again. We're going to have some breakthroughs today, so I'm glad you're here. Uh, let me just get things organized on my desktop. Let's, um, uh, hello, welcome. Uh, you will see a chat button. If you join, type in the chat where you're coming in from and uh hello shridevi paul john kelly gregory welcome just type in the chat where are you coming in from and we're going to get started in just a minute toronto also type in the chat what hello paul welcome from toronto type in the chat what business you're in and uh I really appreciate you coming to this because I know that you're going to have a breakthrough, that you're investing your time in your business, and I promise you're going to get some real breakthroughs from this discussion. Inside desk, fantastic. Um, so welcome, welcome, Kelly. Type in the chat uh, where you're coming in from, what your business is. This is a, a challenge, a masterclass challenge. I, I really want you to get some breakthroughs here so you can fix marketing that's not doing anything for sales. And we're going to cover a lot of ground really fast here in this time that we have together. So type in the chat where you're coming in from. Uh, we've got John. We've got Paul. Please type in the chat where you're coming in from and what your business is. And we're going to get started. So I really hope this doesn't happen to you where uh, you have a lot of blind spots. A lot of people do have blind spots uh, about their their marketing, their website, their sales presentations, their so their social media, the way they see themselves is different than the way their market sees them. And we're going to cover this today. Welcome, Rod. Thanks for joining. Because I know the type of headaches that you as innovative CEOs have with your business is when your solution, which is so unique, so different from anything else out there, is actually confused with those that are nothing like that. Give me a one in the chat if that's ever happened to you. Welcome, Kim. Or also give me a one in the chat if it's hard for you and your team to just explain in just a few words what your innovation does uh, or draw 25 cards. Welcome, welcome, Kim. So uh, we are going to jump into this in a minute. We're going to talk about co-intelligent marketing and we're going to talk about ChatGPT and how to use it. We're going to talk about how clarity of your strategy is power in marketing. And that is really the right approach because if you're paying money with ads, most businesses that spend money on ads find out that ads aren't profitable and it's not because the ads aren't working. It's because when people actually show up from the click through and they get to the business, that the business is confusing it's not clear what they're selling who they're selling it for what the problem is that they're solving and all that so this is what we're going to be discussing today these top five failures in marketing that ceos have and i don't want you to make these failures so um i like to think that the story that you're telling in your business isn't marketing it is the winning strategy and that's why it's tied to the clarity because if your homepage is really in love with your precious solution, instead of your customer success, it's gonna look like the, the awful dude on the left, not the beautiful person on the right. So I wanna thank you for taking time to work on your business. That's why you're here. And I promise you, Rod plus one and Valib, and uh, who do we have here? Paul, Gregory, Sridevi, Kelly, Kim, Pat, Lisa, that you are gonna have some breakthroughs here. And so I appreciate you. And uh, I, I honor you for coming to this discussion. And because um, I know that the hype brag marketing model that has worked for so many years doesn't work anymore. And we're going to talk about what model does. So um, have you been, just give me a one in the chat, have you been a bit disappointed 
by the marketing you get out of your marketer. Just uh, give me a one in the chat if that's happening to you. Also, give me a one if you've been a little disappointed about the marketing content you're getting out of ChatGPT from your prompts. We're gonna be talking about this today and how to nail this and how to fix this today. Great, so prompt engineering is dead. We're gonna talk about why your best sales presentation is actually not your sales presentation and uh, how so many failures we see in companies spending money on fancy websites that aren't doing anything for sales. And it's not because the website isn't pretty and doesn't work correctly. It's because of the story being told, the sections on the site are not being used. We're gonna hand out to you today a template that is a winning template that you can use uh, for your website. So what do you think? Type in the chat here, um, type in the chat, Kim, Pat, Lisa, Valeb, John, Paul, what do you think is standing in the way between your innovation that you've built and your team has built and your all your ideal prospects becoming customers? Like think about what really is standing in the way. Just type in the chat if you've got a thought about that. Type in the chat, I think it's a big question. Paul says, change, Lisa, time and focus, switching pains. Yes, I agree, the problem is clarity of the message. So I think, my feeling is that it's your story, your message is the only thing that's standing in the way because the markets are completely uh, flooded. So we're gonna be talking about the five things CEOs get wrong about marketing and how they turn around a sales slump. We're gonna be diving into the fifth shift today, which is about how to use AI. And we're gonna be talking about um, how uh, you need to be using it. I've had the privilege of working with what I call uh, CEOs, unicorns that have totally crushed it in their spaces. They have done marketing right. And they have made these five shifts that we're gonna be talking about today. Uh, and you can look them up, certainly connect with me on LinkedIn. You can see what they've done. So the five things CEOs get wrong about marketing and how they turn things around. So here are the ground rules. Number one, this is not for spectators. If you were here right now, this is your time. This is my time. We are here together. Thumbs up. Love you guys. This is a little heart there. Uh, this is not for spectators. This is a participatory exercise. Success loves speed and action. I need you to participate. Ground rule number two, I will challenge you. You will not be able to look at your homepage or speak your sales message again the same after this. That is gonna happen to you. If you're not prepared to have this happen to you, you can bow out right now. This is a, a ground rule here. There will not be a replay. This will be a discussion. There are gonna be giveaways at the end, three giveaways. One, the magnetic messaging framework, which is a 16 part framework. that You can compare how your website is doing with all the sections that you need to be telling the story. A, the 12 sales conversations that if you miss one of them, you'll likely lose a deal. Um, you'll, the third thing we're going to give away is a GPT homepage messaging evaluator. Many of you here today have already seen the results of this because we sent it to you prior to this, but you can tap this by for free clicking on that and getting GPT to look at your homepage and evaluate it based on the magnetic messaging framework. So another ground rule, I will not pitch you. This is a zero pitch uh, session, uh, but at the end, I will be offering five CEOs an opportunity to book a free marketing and sales enablement strategy session with me. If you qualify, that is my offer. Does that sound fair to you for this session? There'll be no pitches, zero pitches, nothing to buy at the end of this. Does that sound fair? Give me a yes, a hell yes. Hello, Michael, Rod, got a thumbs up, Kim. Thumbs up, give me a, does that sound fair to you? Okay, awesome. So type in the chat, who is your ideal customer? Because if you wanna really fix your marketing and fix some of the problems you have there, we need to start with who your ideal customer is and how well you understand your ideal customer is your co biggest competitive differentiator, biggest advantage. So type in the chat, who is your ideal customer? So if you're here, it's likely because that you're selling an innovation, uh, breaking through your market in some great way and revolutionizing something. So if that's a yes for you, give me just a one in the chat, if that's yes for you. Okay, is that yes for you? Great, I'm seeing Kim, productive real estate agents and brokers looking to scale, great. ITSM professionals and organizations with 5,000 employees, great. Uh, bail bondsman, awesome. Um, what a cool <laughs> title, bail bondsman. 
MRO senior manager. Great. So type a one in the chat if if you're selling an innovation of some kind and revolutionizing or approaching something different, approaching the solution a different way than your competitors. Give me a one in the chat. If you're not this, this this approach to marketing may not work for you. If you're just selling another minivan that looks identical to all the other minivans out there, then this may not be helpful for you. All right, Kim, John, Lisa, we got ones from you guys. So the bad news right off the bat is says who? If you think you're selling an innovation, that's great, but that's only your perspective. That's not the market's perspective. And that's one of the challenges with marketing, one of the failures we're gonna be talking about today. All right, so who am I? I am Greg Rosner. Capricorn, favorite color is green, but I'm also a fractional CMO for a few companies, actually several companies, and my agency, Pitch Kitchen, offers these 90-day sprints. I have um, sold personally about $35 million worth of enterprise software and services. I saw what doesn't work with marketing. In fact, I began to hate marketing because marketing let me down as a seller didn't help me and my team sell at all. Especially if you've seen these really shitty sales presentations that CMOs work so hard to create and throw over their ivory tower over to the sales team with slides with logos and features and benefits. It doesn't actually help salespeople sell. My mission was to fix all that many years ago. Actually, I think 2017, I started Pitch Kitchen and we've designed about 3,000 uh, websites, sales presentations, messaging frameworks that collectively have earned at least $100 million in business. I'm so uh, proud of the companies that we've helped and uh, also actually helped companies raise investment through telling a better story about their solution. So uh, this is a book that's actually coming out. I, I wrote it. It's called Start With The Problem. And we're going to be talking a lot about some of the content of the book today that's going to really help you. So who is this for? This is for CEOs like you, like Kim, John, Lisa, Pat, Michael, um, Paul, who are bringing an innovation to the market, folks like you are committed to their vision, taking time in your business right now to fix your marketing, CEOs of early stage or growth stage companies stuck in that range between two to maybe 75 million, CEOs whose success depends on getting prospects to change what they're doing, and CEOs who are able to invest their time and money into the business. This is, um, who this is for. Now, if this is not you, if you're not committed to your vision, you're you're not at this stage and feel free to bow out of this session. My promise to you is in the next 45 minutes, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna talk about how to nail your sales message, even if your solution is sophisticated and complicated and needs to be demonstrated, how to turn your homepage into a home run for your perfect buyers. Even if your prospects weren't even looking for your solution or didn't even know that your solution exists, why it's game over for most marketing playbooks and why the, and the top five marketing failures and the shifts that you need to make to fix them, how to attract ideal customers into the buying conversations and lead your category. That's right, be the leader in your category, even if they've never heard of your solution. This is massive. And how to use AI to create a torrent of on-brand, 100% on-brand content without hallucinations or without fancy prompting. I like to call it with lazy prompting. This is a massive promise, massive. You are not gonna go to a webinar ever like this. There's a ton of value that you're gonna get. That's my promise to you. But first, so first of all, are you psyched for that? Give me like a, a three in the chat if you're psyched for that. But first, is this you? Is this you? Um, that your solution is absolutely amazing. You love it. You've got customers who love you, but uh, you and your sales reps are working so, so hard explaining what it does, demoing what it does, trying to make it s uh, convince people why it should be a no brainer. But it is a brainer for them. It, they aren't jumping over and signing every day and twice on Sunday. You have a marketer that's marketing, but isn't turning into sales. You may be spending a lot of money on marketing and events, but it's not turning into sales. You've asked GPT to write you a blog or a post or marketing, and it was rubbish. <laughs> and the time you spent cleaning up the rubbish was like people like us should not be cleaning up the garbage that comes out of intelligent machines. I don't know about you, but I don't want to do that job. 75% of your demo meetings result in no sales. Even after six months, this is happening as a, as a trend in the market. Win rates I see are down. 
Tell me if this is your world. 91% of sales teams are missing quota. Sales cycles are increasing. These are the stats that we see and average deal sizes are decreasing. If this is happening to you, just give me a three in the chat. Also, if this is you where you have read all these great books like This Is Marketing from Seth Godin or Building a Story Brand from Donald Miller, great book, hope you've read it. Gap Selling by Keenan, unbelievable clarity. But you know the formula, but if you go to your website, you look at your messaging on your sales presentations, in your social media, you, you know the formula, but it's just not there. It's just missing. So it's almost like, you know, it hasn't changed in spite of knowing it, then you're in the right place because we're going to talk about what the shifts you need to do to, to change that. If you've got salespeople and they're just singing from a different hymn sheet, some are saying we're the best, some are saying we're the only, but everyone is telling a different story of what you do. Um, you haven't made these shifts. If you're spending money on a website person, a graphics person, a social person, a PPC person, but missing a single easy to tell compelling story that excites you and your team and gets prospects literally banging down the door to start working with you guys, you haven't made these shifts and you're going to get them hopefully at the end of this session. If you've got sales presentations that look more like math textbooks with white backgrounds and page numbers, and you're trying to make up for the fact that your homepage looks really bad because it has words on it like this. Like, look at this site here, creating innovative workflow technologies. Like, what are these guys selling? Who are these guys selling it to? What the heck is going on? This, and so they have a sales presentation that looks like this to make up for the fact that their website doesn't do the heavy lifting. If that's you, just you know, hit me up with a three in the chat. If you've got language that's self-described, like innovative, like you said before, business is innovative or best in class. And I can guarantee you, if a company says it's best in class or a game changer, I guarantee you it's not best in class and it's not a game changer. These self-described words is an absolute mistake, failure in marketing. If you train your GPT, on invisible marketing, you will lose sales. And guess what GPT out of the box has been trained on? So, I mean, there's so much here. Like if you have pushing more content in case studies and ROI calculators, and it's not helping convert, if your sales process is complicated and you just are really thinking, gosh, how can our sales messaging be simple? Every customer is so unique and everything we do is so sophisticated, then you really haven't made the shifts yet that you need to make. So the good news is, the great news is that those are symptoms. Those are all symptoms. The real problem that you can solve by shifting this is by making these five shifts. And we'll talk about the mistakes, the top five mistakes, and the shifts that you need to make to fix them. But once you do, once you make these shifts, you're going to have complete confidence in every dollar you spend on marketing because it's going to turn into sales. You're going to lead your category, accelerate qualification, close more deals. The people you trust to bring your business forward will be 100% aligned, running in the right direction. You'll be able to close tons, sorry, create tons of 100% on brand content, like with lazy prompts without hiring anybody. Attract ideal prospects showing up predisposed. Uh, and ready to buy. That's my promise to you. So we're going to jump into the five uh, things CEOs get wrong about marketing and how they turn around a sales slump. If you guys are excited as I am to jump into these, just give me a heck yes or a hell yes or something in the chat. Uh, who is here? Uh, we got Nash. Welcome, Nash. Michael, Valab, Kim, Rod, Kelly, John, Paul, Give me a yes in the chat. If I got a muscle from Kim, a Michael, we are here. Let's have some fun. Let's get into this. It's not depressing. This is great news. You're going to make these shifts. You're going to turn around your sales slump right away here. This is exciting. So mistake number one, follow your competitors. Look at what your competitors do and do what they do. This is mistake number one. And the reason why is because you need to lead a movement. And your competitors are likely not leading a movement. They are probably leading with some happy stuff about their solution. So this is what I mean by leading a movement. If you're selling an innovation, what does your innovation challenge? Type in the chat right now, 
what does your innovation challenge? What does it require your ideal customers to do? All right, think about that. What does it require them to do? So what's the enemy that you and your customers both have in common? You need to think about leading a movement against the enemy. And think about what you you have in common. Look at what Salesforce.com, they're a multi-billion dollar company, but they were not in 2012. And they led a movement and the movement was against software. I don't know if you remember these silly software guys in suits at uh, Salesforce conferences back in 2012, but that was the movement that they led. And they were very successful with that. They led a movement against software. And this was early days when moving to the cloud was actually a thing. And that's what they did. They led a movement against software. All right, so look at HubSpot. Their movement was about inbound marketing. That is the new way. DocuSign, end this agreement chaos and move to the better way. So the old way is you're just pitching. Your competitors are likely pitching, making claims like an arrogant expert of why we're the best and here's why. But the new way is you are leading a movement, leading almost like a rebellion against the old way and encouraging your customers to make a change, not to buy your product and sign on the contract, but to achieve the outcomes or take the approach that your innovation takes. Is this beginning to make sense? Type in the chat, Rod, we challenge the notion that AI chat software will fix the disconnect between companies and their customers. So you challenge that notion, great. John, misunderstanding what a project is, no less a portfolio of projects. I don't know if I follow that, but interesting. Optimize AR collection with automation. So what are you rebelling against, Paul? That's not clear to me. It sounds like that's a goal. You need to focus on leading a movement against something and towards something. What are you asking people to stop doing? What do they need to start doing? So it sounds like you're asking people to start optimizing the AR collection with automation but what are you asking them to stop doing? This is just as important in leading a movement, leading rebellion, because your innovation likely requires change. What's your contrarian ideology? What is that? If you wanna stand out, you gotta know what you stand for. Get clear on that. What are you asking people to stop doing? What do they need to start doing? Okay, what do they need to end? What do they need to stop and replace with? So look at what Tiled is doing. If it's not interactive, it's not working. They're focused on talking about the old way versus the new way. Cognition, the old way is spreadsheets. The new way is this idea of connected information. So this is what you need to do. You need to stop the hype marketing around how great your innovation is and really lead a movement against something, the enemy of your customers, which is your enemy as well, and lead a movement is said. Is this make sense to you? Type in the chat, making sense. Come on, I hope this is making sense. And if you got some ideas as to what your rebellion is, it can even look like a hashtag, believe it or not. So sales is an act of leadership. If you believe that sales is an act of leadership, give me a, a nine in the chat. Uh, give me a nine in the chat. If sales is really an act of leadership, leading your customers who are suffering in their business to help them overcome the thing that's holding them back and getting them to a place of success. So it really is, I believe that this is an act of leadership. And so you should be freaking leading an uprising, absolute rebellion, get into it against the status quo, which is making your customers suffer. If you wanna be the market leader, this is what you gotta do. I don't recommend doing a TED talk, but if you were to do a TED Talk, because TED Talks don't get people to do anything, it just spreads good ideas. But if you would do a TED Talk, you would picture a world where. And so get really clear on what that world really looks like if everyone adopted your innovation. And like, look, look at what Airbnb is doing, like a world where people can live anywhere. Like they totally are leading a movement towards the freedom of where you could live and succeeding, they're crushing the market. And so it could look like a hashtag. And a hashtag is revealing for a lot of great organizations like the Wall Street Journal, Trust Your Source, Nike, Just Do It, 
live anywhere, uh, Airbnb, um, write with confidence. Uh, I'm not sure who that's from, but hit your numbers from Zoom Info. Uh, own your tomorrow. That's Charles Schwab. You know, make America great again. I'm not a Donald Trump fan myself. In fact, I don't like any of the candidates we got. It's kind of gross at the moment, but I know great marketing when I see it. And that's some great marketing. Uh, so uh, find your beach. That's actually Corona. So looking at all these hashtags and speaking about leading a movement, all of these brands are very clear about the movement that they are encouraging their customers to take, their constituents to take. So what do they all have in common? Could you find the common denominator here, the underlying structure? Because this is the shift that uh, we help our customers make and you can make too. And it may show up in the hashtag, it'll show up everywhere in every word and everything that you do. It's a shift about leading a movement. So what do all of these have in common? Paul, action, yes. They're all about, they all start with a verb, a verb, it's a demand to make a change. And it's not just a change, they're all actually a positive change. They all have a, not for everybody, but for their constituents, for their customers who want to live anywhere. Um, uh, I think TikTok is make your day, by the way, but it's for their, uh, not everybody loves TikTok, but it is a positive view of the of a change. And it can't be a negative, like uh, Occupy Wall Street didn't succeed as a movement. And why didn't Occupy Wall Street succeed? Because it, one wasn't positive, it was negative, and it didn't paint a picture of a positive future. So this is some real powerful stuff. And I learned a lot of this from a great book that I read and actually some coaching I got from a Dr. Michelle Mazur, who wrote a book called The Three Word Rebellion, recommend it. So underlying that, hit your number, Zoom info, absolutely. It's great. Dominate your market. You get the idea. Marketing is about action. Marketing is about change, not hype. So this is the shift number one. You need to lead a movement. So Jeff Aronson, the president of Equipex, before he had made these corrections in his marketing, uh, confusing marketing content, website sucked, pipeline was thin, letting key partners, investors down, losing deals to no decision. It was brutal. And afterwards, tripled revenue, 6X pipeline in just four months. I am so impressed by what Jeff and his team was able to do because, uh, and I'm so grateful as he is grateful that the business vision is materializing. Uh, this is the after uh, website, which is just so much better than the new site, not just in terms of design, but also just in terms of the clarity of the story, uh, the transformation story and how they're getting their customers to change turning their underutilized equipment into optimized health system is so much better. And by the way, if you want us to take a look at your website, even in this session, we can give a quick uh, hot seat uh, recommendations. We can do that. Just type in your URL and we'll come back to it later. So this is actually a really good site that's actually being developed now. And they're jumping on co-intelligent uh, co -intelligence systems as a new category that we actually help them create. Co-intelligent systems, it's brilliant. It's not just AI enabled, it's not just AI infused, it's co-intelligent, which is this collaborative nature of AI that is the future. Every business is gonna have AI in it. Why not make it co-intelligent? Anyway, this is great. And I'm not gonna go into details here as to why this is great, but it contrasts the old way and the new way and what happens. So if this makes sense that you really need to lead a movement, as the first shift instead of copying your competitors just give me a make sense in the chat okay all right let's get into number two wait if you want to um, book a meeting there's the qr code you can tap that or in the offer in the upper right hand corner you should be able to click on that and book some time with me to discuss your business all right uh, so, yeah, these are some folks we had the privilege of working with, and they are crushing it right now. And uh, Warren Johnson, we're actually working with Warren right now as well, Scribex, bringing in innovation to doctor's offices all around the United States. But before these shifts, had stagnant growth, good salespeople were leaving, the value of innovation just wasn't getting across. Afterwards, I think he went from 137 customers right to 2000 almost 3012 months and this all happened through brand messaging makeover website revamp 
sales presentation we designed and their whole framework using AI to help them market and sell. Uh, Manish also peer to peer has this competitor to the Amazon Prime, believe it or not, missing targets, bootstrapped with limited runway, couldn't invest after the shifts. Um, you know, they've grown exponentially and that's awesome for them. So anyway, let's get on to mistake number two. Number two, lead with your solution. So I know a lot of you guys as CEOs are excited about your solution and are leading with your solution, but you can't do that anymore. You really need to start and lead with the problem. So why can't you start with your solution? Why doesn't this work anymore? Type in the chat if you have a sense as to why this doesn't work anymore. Here's a picture that probably explains very clearly why leading with your solution doesn't work anymore. Why? Type in the chat, why doesn't leading with your solution work anymore? So Michael, get it done fast. The reason why I don't like that is because it's not clear any context. Give us some context there. If there's any crunchiness to it, that would make it better. Like get it done fast is almost like just do it like Nike. And unless you're Nike, consumer brand, it's not going to work so well. So try to get be more specific about what the outcome is. Um, so prospect cannot relate to a solution. And also it's just like, look at this. This is the AI enabled market landscape. And in fact, by next, by 2027, every business is going to be AI enabled. It'll be like freaking electricity. Oh, you have a business, you have electricity, you have AI. No big deal. So AI is not going to be your differentiator how you use AI and what you're doing and how you're solving problems is. So where is your solution? Where's Waldo? This is why you can't start with your solution because it's all just noise. It is, it's noise. Gregory, you nailed it, it's just noise. So here's the thing. If you're, if you're selling a vitamin, are you selling a painkiller? People are two times more likely to buy something to relieve pain then gain something. So if you're leading with your solution, you're essentially selling a vitamin, not a painkiller. So um, it doesn't work anymore. Selling solutions because uh, you're not answering these questions. Why should someone change? Why should they change now? And why should they change with you? I was watching the show about the metric system. The metric system is so much better than the imperial system. When I was a kid in the 70s, I was being told by my teachers, we're gonna switch over to the metric system. Give me a one in the chat if you remember that shit. And I was like, okay, let's learn the metric system. And like, it never happened, like except for wine bottles. And it never happened because it, there was no compelling pain or reason to change for a lot of industries. So the old way of pitching is you're starting with a solution. You're saying things like, we help companies do blah, blah, blah. We help companies achieve better this or get better this or get more revenue or faster time. That's the old way. It doesn't work anymore. It doesn't. And if I'm raising my voice, I want you to hear this. The new way is we help companies who are struggling, who are frustrated with. That is the new way. Because if you look at this chart, let's turn the, the, the crossing the chasm. Let's turn this upside down. And this is in my book as well, starting with the problem. If you think about it, the people who are going to buy your solution and who have bought your solution in the last six months, they are people who have recognized either before they started talking to you or as soon as they started talking to you and your team that the risk of doing nothing was greater than the risk of changing. Let me say that again. They do you agree with this? That those people they felt, they knew, they believed for whatever reason, they believed that the risk of another day, another week, or a month or year of doing the same old, same old was greater than the risk of changing. Give me a, a one in the chat if you're wrapping your head around how important this fact is. Yeah. So you need to actually ignore the people on the left side of the chart, educate people who are climbing up the mountain influence the people who are at the top and encourage the hell out of people who are on that other side of that curve. And this is the key to starting with the problem. So there's, I'm gonna, I don't have much time to go through some examples. Um, type in the, co the comments here, what's the number one problem you solve? Type in the comments. I wanna see if you've got this before we move on to number three, the biggest mistake. So the, the mistake number two is starting with the solution. 
type in the chat here what's the number one problem you solve let's hear it let's type it in the chat let's see it to see if you got it if you didn't i'm going to smack you upside with a virtual two by four because it's important that you get this it's important so uh, we help agents who are struggling with trying to do it all i like that that's uh, so what is the problem kim that your your agents are having that's so if they're struggling to do it all, what's the problem look like? They're str I'm, I'm still not clear actually about the problem. So Gregory, poor tech delivery, that's a problem. Uh, turnaround time is not a problem, Bella. I'm sorry. Turnaround time is a goal. It's a future thing. So what about the turnaround time is a problem? Remove operational chaos, John. Remove operational chaos. That is not a problem. I'm sorry, John. Why isn't that a problem? Does anyone want to comment for John? Why isn't removing operational chaos a problem? That is a goal. That is a future event. A problem is a present, clear event that's happening now. It's happening in the business now. It's not something they want to do. They may think about doing. They feel like maybe sometime they want to do it. I want you to get this. It's something that's happening right now in the business problem poor transaction and timeline management skills kim i like that and so i'm sure that problem has an impact on that organization so very good so you can't just tell fa give facts you know to people facts do facts change people's minds give me a yes or no in the chat do facts change people's minds if you tell your customers facts about your solution and facts about the problem does it change people's minds no it doesn't you cannot give facts. And so nobody cares about your facts. Nobody cares about your why. Nobody cares about your product, your business, your solution. What do your customers care about? Type in the chat. What do they really care about? Yes, people believe in the things that they themselves decide, not the things you tell them. So. Here's the key, and here's the reason why starting with the problem is so essential and the mistake that a lot of most, I'd say 90% of marketing happens, bad CMOs that are fired in 12 months happens, um, is they're leading with their solution. And it doesn't work anymore, but if you can lead with the problem and describe the problem better than they can, because you built a solution because you understand the industry's problem better than most, I would hope so, then they will automatically believe that you have the best solution. This is huge. This means that you've got authority, you've got credibility because you understand and articulate the problem right there on your homepage, your clarity about the problem. So look at how beautiful this is. ReadyWorks, you actually saw the ReadyWorks Health before website earlier in this presentation. This is the after where they're starting with the problem. Put patients before paper. Like every one of their customers wants to do this and they realize that this is a problem. Their doctors and nurses have their faces buried in paperwork. We hate that, don't we? When we go to doctors and they don't even look at us in the eyes <laughs> that they're just sitting at a laptop, you know, or at a, at a document station, whatever. Like this is a huge problem. So ReadyWorks helps doctors with this by turning paper checklists into smart forms. So I'm pitching for, you know, as it were, what ReadyWorks is offering, but you get it. You get how powerful and clear it is when an innovative business leads with the problem. So if this is making sense, we're starting with the problem instead of starting with the solution, give me a make sense in the chat. And so far, how is this working for you? You're getting value so far? Is this working? Yeah, sense, I love, the, I love your spelling. I, I love it. Because by the way, spelling and grammar, uh, is not a thing anymore because GPT never gets spelling wrong and never gets grammar wrong. And so it's just so enchanting and so charming when people make spelling mistakes. I love it. So, all right. So that's number three. So why is this so hard? It's hard because the marketers you pay are going to market. That's just what they're going to do. You've got blind spots. You're using outdated playbooks. The alternatives still are ruling for your customers. You're buying alternatives or, or they're just sticking with the status quo. And there's a lot of wasted spend on bad websites. I see also a lot of venture back companies going under. Last year, I saw 3,200 private venture back companies had bellied up just last year. There's an innovation graveyard. So it's not just about how great your solution is. That doesn't matter. It's your message. 
It's the clarity of your story that shows up in every conversation and most importantly, shows up on your homepage. That's right, on your homepage. The best salesperson won't save you because they're gonna quit after three months if your homepage doesn't tell the story. Uh, the, your fancy GP top prompts won't save you because it's trained on marketing from 2015 and uh, sites like Enron and Theranos. And if you know what I mean by Enron and Theranos, say, I got you, Greg. Just say, I got you, Greg, if you know what I mean. Mistake number three is you make your solution, <laughs> you make your solution the hero of the story. And I'm sorry, this is just the thing you gotta do. You gotta make your customer the hero. And you're like, oh, of course we do. We, we wanna make our customers the hero. But the fact is most CEOs and most marketers don't know in hell how to do that. And because the reality is, what is your marketing in love with? What is it in love with? Come on, every marketer you hire is going to probably, and even GPT is going to write marketing that's going to make you feel like you loved your solution. So mirror, mirror on the wall, what is your homepage obsessed with? Come on, type in the chat. Be honest. We're among friends. We're among friends. I love you guys. You can be honest. What is your homepage obsessed with? Mirror, mirror on the wall. Come on, type in the chat. Let's get real. Come on. What's it obsessed with? Yes, I feel you, Michael. It's true. It is. Every CEO says, let's make our customer the hero. Every marketer says, I can do that. Reality is no one or very few know exactly how to do it. And if your customer is the hero of the story, this is the pivot. What does that make you? Just get really grounded in this. Get grounded in what that makes you. Type in the chat. <laughs> I see you, Kim. Ours says number one in the industry. Uh, yeah. Oh, that's so 90s. Uh, hello, uh, 20, 2001, 2001 called and said they want their marketing back, Kim. They want their website back. So uh, what does that make you? What does that make you if your customer is the hero of the story. What does that make you? Type in the chat. What does that make your brand? What does that make your innovation? All right, so get clear on this. Uh, if you're saying things like bringing clarity to risk, that's really making acuity the hero and you don't wanna do that. So the old way, the voice that you're using, the voice in every bit of your marketing and GPT doesn't know this out of the box. If you're just prompting GPT, it doesn't know the voice that you need to take it's gonna use why we're the best voice um, instead of a voice that is how we make you better. And this really positions you as the guide or the trusted advisor. So Michael, it's not the savior, not the savior. Um, the savior is the hero, okay? It's the guide. Your customer is really the savior of the hero. Uh, there's a victim in the story too. You can wanna to put in the chat, you know, just type in there who you think the enemy of the story is get clear on who the enemy is and that's the uh, enemy that you have that's typically the status quo type that in in detail what that looks like that's the enemy of your customer that's holding them back there's a victim to the story there's a hero of the story which is typically your customer there is a guide which is a trusted advisor which is your brand and then there's an innovation which is what your brand is selling and the voice that it all comes from is explaining how you make your customers better so um, a threat to them, Gregory says, I'm not sure the context. So this is a really shitty website from a company called IPMD. And it's shitty because as you can see, what is this? They're creating a better world for tomorrow. Like, what is this for? Who is this for? What are they selling? Oh my gosh. And this isn't just a one-off, but this is the after. Give doctors superpowers bringing emotional, artificial intelligence to patient encounters. I get it. So this is some telemedicine platform that informs doctors on their patient's emotional state to give them a layer of, of help so they can help their patients better. Turn virtual, virtual patient checkups into deeply insightful interactions. I get it. Much better. So if, just to contrast, like this is a before, this is after, and making your customer the hero of the story is essential and it comes in terms of the voice that you're using in all of your marketing, all of your messaging, all of your social, it's the common thread. So what are you really selling? 
you know, if you think about it, you're selling a solution that helps your customers get from where they are to where they want to go, from what they're doing today to what they would like to do or how they're doing things today to how they want to be doing. Is that right? Isn't this like what you're really selling? You're helping selling. So if you really get clear on what are you really selling, just type in the chat. Does this make sense? Like, what are you really selling? You're selling, you're selling a capability that's going to help them change. You're helping them change. That's why marketing isn't about selling. It isn't about promotion or hyping. It's about helping people change. If this is making sense, type in the chat. And there's that risk of doing nothing thing. And I love that quote by Anis Nin. That's, you know, I don't know if you know that beautiful quote, but, you know, the idea that, and the day came when remaining tight as a bud became, you know, unbearable or, you know, a threat. Or I forget the exact words. You can ask ChatGPT for it, but it became intolerable, uh, more, more risk than blossoming. And that's really what you got to help your customers do. Get the cost of inaction and the cost of doing nothing. So, um, you know, we can talk about that uh, in our meetings together, but just a quick take on Patricia, BST Perform, they were selling a very sophisticated product in the behavior science uh, space. New product, massive goals, couldn't differentiate, missing sales targets. After she had made these shifts, doubled sales rates in three months. Unbelievable confidence with the marketing spend, poised for acquisition, which is the next step for her business. And I'm just so... Um, impressed by this business so you can see what she was saying there in that voice to stop this delivery at any cost and to start this cost effective delivery and it's like the approach that really is helping her customers get the outcomes that they want she sent me this email that said uh after the first post on linkedin the new messaging book meetings like right away from an aba organization with 650 employees so messaging matters and making your customer the hero matters instead of your solution if that makes sense uh type in the chat makes sense and i'll so quick take suggestions on your home page type it in the url and we'll if we have time at the end we'll spend some time and, and give you some critiques on that all right so uh next mistake number four mistake number four is blend in and by the way that offer stands if you want to get some personalized discussion about your business and getting a game plan to getting it fixed, book some time with me, hit that offer button and do that. Uh, so mistake number four is to blend in. Can't blend anymore. You need to name your category. This is the opposite of blending in. So blending in, when I say blend in, you are selling your product in an existing category. That's what blending in means. The real companies that make a, a difference, and it could be you, is they name their category, name your freaking category, put a flag in the ground. Think about it, you know, telephone, 1990s, mobile phone, smartphone. I mean, what's coming next? It probably has phone in it, but look what's changed. It's been a prefix. It's typically a prefix, a word before it. Look what Apple did with spatial computing. Now, I don't think personally this was a success, the uh, headset. But you see where this is going in a few years. Apple's going to own spatial computing as a category with Apple glasses and connecting augmented reality uh, with the world. And they created this category. They also created another category called Apple intelligence, which is also just brilliant, it's, you know, AI. Um, and it's their category. They're lending their brand of, of creativity and privacy to artificial intelligence. So comfort ownership is another great category from a company called Comfort Connect. And it's the idea, the opposite of equipment ownership. So instead of owning equipment, they're selling an option to own the guaranteed comfort. You don't own the equipment for, for 10 years. You don't have to worry about maintenance. So that's that option. So how do you beat Bobby Fischer? You, you, I don't know if you know Bobby Fischer, uh, the pl chess playing person who vanished, but you beat him at any game but chess. And that's what you got to do. That's what smart CEOs do. They create categories. And so ReadyWorks and categories for Gartner, if you want to play in the Gartner space, is that upper right. You're going to create your own upper right space uh, by creating a new category. ReadyWorks is with smart forms, clippers with video intelligence. 
uh, cognition is information driven versus document driven. So a category could be an approach, a mindset, a way, um, a process like intelligent recovery versus just data backup, a CCO versus a PPO in the, in the uh, care uh, insurance business. Um, you know, there's these businesses here from Dropbox to Clear Metal. You can see clearly the ones that have crushed it in the last few years. They have all named their category. And this is something we help our clients with, and give them the clarity of naming their category. It's massive. So what is your unique category? If you know what it is, type it in the chat. Let's see what you guys are thinking. Uh, we've got Paul, Shudevi, Kelly, Kim, Pat, Valid, Michael. What is your category? Revenue cycle optimization management. Okay. And is, do you, is that a unique category to you, Paul? Is that yours? Or is that an existing category? So this is the, the difference I'm trying to say is that what is your, if you're in a competitive space, a revenue cycle optimization management, then maybe that's unique. And I'm not sure you need to add a fifth word to that, uh, but you do need to uh, have unique. Otherwise, you're just selling another minivan, which may be okay for you. But if you really want to make a shift here and stand out, and be different in your company and show how you're different. It's got to be how you're different and naming that category. Does that make sense? Okay. Mistake number five. Um, and we're good on time. Co complex, John, co complex portfolio management. So interesting. And it's okay that I don't know what co complex means. It's a bit of a pattern disrupt. Um, and that's fine. And I think that it's begging, like, well, what is that? And that is sort of like pattern disrupting. So, uh, I will put that in the maybe category if that works. Mistake number five, fail to give AI a seat at the table. So I don't know how many of you have spent many sleepless nights experimenting with uh, AI, but I, I really hope that you have because this is not a, a nice to have. This is essential to play, to create, to explore. And the secret weapon that you need to be using is a certain way in using AI. I'm going to be explaining that to you here. So the secret weapon, before we go into the secret weapon, this is the fifth shift, is like, do you have a core messaging framework document that maybe it's a five or 10 page document that outlines really who you're selling to, what their problem is, what happens if they don't make a change, the old way versus the new way, what you're selling to them, um, what happens if they don't make a change, really outlining the whole journey that the hero in the story your customer would need to make and even who the villain of the story is that's really what this core messaging framework document should have and if you don't have this so give me um i don't know it's yes or no in the chat do you have a document like this if you don't if you realize like most people most ceos don't have this um that's this is a real starting point for you because if you've been disappointed by the marketing content you get out of chat gpt it's because it hasn't been trained and the prompts don't work because GPT uh, has been trained on marketing, old marketing playbooks. And if you know, if you've experimented with GPT, give me a one in the chat if you have seen words like embark and unleash and discover and amplify and bespoke, robust or harness. These are shitty words that have come out of 2015 that the billions of words of training data that GPT got that is showing up in your marketing if you're just fancy prompting and fancy prompting may work but most of the time it doesn't work in a consistent way and it can't be shared with your team so gpt is like an apprentice marketer that has been trained on billions of marketing words from the 2010s and the secret weapon is this get ai to become your solution expert in your brand voice but how do you do that okay the first thing you have to do is get a fractional cmo or similar who will unlock a year of strategic marketing and growth in three months at a fraction of the cost, refine your story through expert facilitated interviews of your leadership and customers using the most effective marketing frameworks. Once you've done that, transform your homepage, your sales deck, your marketing and messaging to be problem centric and compelling, and then use the finishing framework that you've got because you've nailed the message, use that to pre-train a custom GPT, and just give me a one in the chat if you've experimented in creating custom GPTs, it'll be yours, your own the free employee that once you train a custom GPT on your nailed messaging, your nailed framework, it's going to produce 
100% on-brand content with lazy prompt, and you can call it a co-intelligent marketer. And we've created already about 30 of these custom GPTs for our clients that they are just like, oh my gosh, they're using it all the time and it's free. They use it to spin up everything from emails to proposals for their entire team is, is using it from social media posts and everything is using the hashtag that was created. Everything is using the framework that was created. So it's, it's co-intelligent. If this is making sense to you, just give me a make sense. If you've heard anything like this before, I'm curious, like, uh, type in the chat, I've heard about this, or like, I haven't heard about this. This is actually breaking stuff. This is totally cutting edge stuff that most, like 99.99% .99 of the CEOs out there don't have a clue about how to really tap the power of AI for marketing and sales generation. So this is what we call the sales enablement ladder, and you can see this on our website. But basically, in order to get to that GPT, that happens in month two. Month one, we're doing that heavy lifting, getting really clear with you and your team on what your message is and what it needs to be using the most powerful and most compelling frameworks out there. And once that's done, then we, we create the messaging framework document, we train the GPT and boom, you're off to the races. Like, producing tons of content that would otherwise cost you hundreds of thousands of dollars. You get it done for free by month three, but you can do other things. By month three, you can do webinar series and lead magnet creations and email outreach and doing a whole bunch of stuff, but you need to do the heavy lifting first, this clarity on your story. All these questions like, what are we selling? What's the name of the old game? What's the name of the new game? How are we different? What's the plan that we're giving our customers to make to get from where they are to where they want to go? All of this shit needs to be clarified or you're not going to make it. This looks like you know, a boring 15 page or 20 page document, but this is the training data that is uploaded to GPT and then you could lazy prompt. And I can give you an example. Uh, I'll show you lazy prompting what that looks like and how satisfying that is to lazy prompt with typos and spelling and get an amazing output so that you create a co-intelligent marketer uh, through co-intelligent marketing. So I call co-intelligent because it's collaboratively intelligent. That's what it is. And so you can create this torrent of content very easily. Uh, so I'll show you what this looks like um, by live. I'll just show you by jumping into GPT in a minute. Uh, and it's pretty fascinating. And you know the reason why the heavy lifting is hard because when you're inside the box, you've been steeped in business, you're, you're whole building your company, building your solution. It's really hard to see things from an outside approach. Like you know, poor Buzz Lightyear thought he was a spaceman, but he was a toy. But maybe he is a spaceman. I don't know. I love Buzz. Um, so Masood, uh, you know, frustrated with uh, sales declining. Uh, he's the CEO of a, actually three companies now. One of his companies, he was experiencing 30 demos to one sale. Like that is absolutely atrocious. Large sales team over and anxious about limited financial runway. They were not going to make it. This is actually the before website. Kubernetes application resiliency starts here. Like what does even that mean? It's absolutely terrible. It also positions them as the hero that doesn't work. Get intelligent recovery is the after site and so much better. Very clear that this is something that a lot of businesses need is this idea of intelligent recovery, not just backup and recovery. So afterwards, tripled at bats, doubled win rate in two months and really great success. And I'm, I'm excited for them. So um, I'm gonna give away this magnetic messaging framework and what you'll see from this PDF that you'll download in a minute um, is, and I'll put it up here for you now. Um, where is it? I'll put it up here, share handout. So you see a handout there in the upper right-hand corner. You click on this and this will download a PDF that will take you through really all the bases that you need to hit uh, on your site from the transformation story to the call to value, which is more important than a call to action. Like why should they take action? It's gotta be valuable. So it's really like a sharp points are on this. People need to know, who is this product or solution for? Is it for them? Is it for somebody else? If they don't get that, they're just going to bounce. So these are some examples of some really great sites that I don't have time to go into. But um, this is also a problem section. You definitely need to have a problem section to put words 
that describes the problem because the new SEO is actually not looking for solutions. It's looking for problems, especially with AI, listening to Alexa and Google, what people are saying, describing their problem or the words that need to show up on your homepage. So that's really important. All right. So uh, this is also a contrasting the old way of call to action versus the new way to call to action, which is very specific. You want to say active things like schedule your session, get expert recommendations, not passive like learn more or get started. Don't do that. That does it's not not successful. And I'm a big fan of getting rid of forms on your website. Like don't say first name, last name, company name. Don't do that. Just have one click Tuesday at two o'clock. And once they click Tuesday and two o'clock then you can qualify them with their information and you can ask other questions that confirm they are qualified so you're not getting people booking and they're not qualified so this is just a much better way to do it um about your presentation you know you want to turn your presentation which is often just you know a spray and pray kind of thing that compensates for a shitty website you want to turn it into a set of real conversations i'm going to be sharing with you the 12 conversations as a download here and it's because you know you're meeting with customers who say they have a problem and you don't want to have salespeople just saying great here's our solution you want to have good sales reps that are saying well tell me you know why do you want this fixed and what happens if you don't get this fixed and talking about the challenges and the impact of those challenges so if you really look at the best sales presentations you've had they've revolved around having these right conversations so this is an example of a beautiful slide deck and these all the slide decks that we work on are around three conversations conversations around their challenges conversations around their goals and uh, uh conversations around the path to get there and um so this is the fifth shift um uh, i would say uh is to get a fractional cmo or similar that is going to unlock a year of strategic marketing in 90 days and to refine your story uh, and with facilitated interviews, fix your homepage and use the finished framework to train a GPT. So here's what I promised. I promised how to nail your sales message, how to turn your homepage into a home run, how, why it's game over for most marketing playbooks and what you need to do instead, how to attract ideal customers into buying conversations and lead your category by naming that category by the approach that your solution uh, confers to take, and how to use AI to create a torrent of 100% on-brand content. That's what I believe I delivered. I hope I did. So this is what you need to, to win. To recap, you don't want to lead, uh, you don't want to copy your, your competitors. You want to lead a movement. You don't want to start with the solution. You want to start with the problem. You don't want to be the hero. You want to make your customers the hero. You, you want to name your category, not just fit in and blend in with a category. You want to use the secret weapon, which is what we talked about, uh, not just hire another marketer that's going to make happy horseshit. And a lot of marketing is happy for horseshit. And if you haven't seen that, then you haven't spent enough money on marketing or wasted enough money on marketing. Oh, my gosh. So I would say now you have a choice. You can go it alone or you can get expert help. And if you snap that uh, QR code, you can book that time for me. And here's what I have for you. I've set aside five 45 minute Zoom calls and I run a small business. Don't book if you're not really serious on fixing these things, but if you are, uh, we'll take this time together to get a personalized sales and marketing gap assessment. I'll give you recommendations of exactly what you need to get done and we'll get a game plan to getting it done. And it's absolutely free if you qualify. So let's get into the giveaway time. So uh, the 16 part magnetic messaging uh, framework is, you've already have that. The second thing I wanna give away is the 12 sales conversations that open minds and close deals. I'm gonna put this in the chat here. Okay, that's the second one. And uh, the third one is the GPT that you could use and put it against your website and get an evaluation, get an audit on your website and to see how well it is uh, comparing against the magnetic messaging framework. So these are the giveaways. You've got them. And uh, just if you have any questions, type in the chat, questions or comments. Valad, great conversation. Awesome. Um, so 
Uh, if you don't hire an, an outside expert, I would say you're going to struggle to do this alone. It's really hard. Your marketers, most marketers that you hire aren't paid to take an opposing view. They are paid to make your stuff sound beautiful. And if you don't know that, you haven't wasted enough money on marketing already. You're going to go back and forth between good opinions. You won't likely be using the most proven frameworks. Solution-driven ID pool, everyone's talking about solutions. No one's talking about problems, that that's what's really attracting your customers. And you know, you're going to waste time and people on demos that don't close and unqualified people. So I like to say, don't hire a marketer, hire a sales enabler, because that's really what we're talking about. We're talking about um, enabling sales. So snap that QR code. If this is important to you, you want to fix this for your business, I'd be honored to spend the time with you to do it. If not, no uh, hard feelings. I, you can run with this and, and hopefully you'll be successful. It takes a lot of work and there's 101 ways or 1,001 ways to, to do this wrong. So um, I would say do not book if these things like don't waste my time, please, out of respect, if you do not have a viable product with happy customers. Um, because what we're talking about now only works if you have a good product and you have happy customers. What we're, this marketing approach has to only works with that. And two, if you aren't committed to your vision, if you aren't committed to your vision, it's, it's not going to work. Please don't book. If you are okay with the way your business is now, do not book. Um, because this is only for if you want to make uh, get to that next level, because uh, it's going to take work. If you aren't challenging the status quo. So again, if you're just selling another minivan and not selling something new and innovative, then do not book. And if you can't or you won't invest time or money in your business, please do not book. I like to say see success uh, loves speed and action. And I want to encourage you guys to be successful because if you don't do this right, I think everything, uh, this is all standing in the way of you earning earning the business that your business deserves. Um, <clears throat> all right, so uh, we have some time now if you want to stay with folks that are here and we'll do some website critiques. We've got valid, aquilatest.ai. We've got Paul inside desk. We've got John Exapron. We've got Gray, Gregory Grayson. Uh, eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Catch a tiger. So if you're still here, type in uh, the in the chat which website, and then I'll just do that one since if you're here. And if you have any questions or comments, uh, type it in the chat. <clears throat> Grayson. Okay, so let's do the Grayson site. Grayson.com. Okay. And then I'll also, we'll go over to GPT, and I'll show you what that looks like. So um, over here, these are GPTs that were created that I created, uh, and you can create them too. And creating a GPT essentially means um, giving a job, saying, I want you to be a social media or marketing copywriter, and then uploading the framework. And this is like a 15 page framework that has the messaging all down. But once you've done that, then you can lazy prompt and say like, yo, 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 please write me a, a blog post on uh, something cool. Like how terrible of a lazy prompt is that? Okay, like that is the worst prompt that you've ever seen in your life. Is that the worst prompt you've ever seen? Type it in the chat, yes or no. So empower your practice with Scribe X Remote Healthcare. So look at this. This is a great post because it's been trained. It's been trained on everything about Scribe X. So that's the difference. All right, so let's go to Grayson uh, here. Grayson, rethink your technology strategy. Create a secure environment to support your business continuity. See how we can help. Grayson, rethink. Okay, so when I get here, I don't know who this is for. It means I have a, a company or my CEO is CISO. Who is this for? Is this for CISOs? Is this for CEOs or chief technology officers? for what, Fortune 10 companies, Fortune 1000 companies, small, medium-sized businesses, I don't know who you serve. Rethink your technology strategy. It's telling me, okay, rethink, but it's not saying why I should rethink. Well, what's wrong with my, my technology strategy? Are you calling me out? You're saying I have a problem? Prove to me that you understand my problem. Rethink, you're telling me to rethink, but like I'm second guessing it maybe, but I don't know that you have demonstrated the authority, 
that you need to by telling me what my problem is or just like what problem would I have with my current strategy? So next thing, I don't know what the, uh, I see what industries you serve. I see learn more. I see a lot of buttons here, see how we can help, but I don't know if I want to click on every button. I got too many options here as a prospect. Like I don't want to like go through a, a treasure hunt game here. What do you want me to do? Sign up for a newsletter, contact us, learn more. Uh, I'm going to click on learn more and see what happens. Learn more. I still don't know what you want me to do. So this fails from a conversion perspective. It fails because uh, I don't know who this is for. I don't know what you're selling. Are you selling a service? Are you selling a technology? So listen, Gregory, I don't mean to be too harsh. I am from New York, so I tend to have a sharp edge. But I'm just, I hope you can take it. I want you to be successful. And I know a lot, I'm speaking for the trees here. I'm speaking for the people that have heard about you, word of mouth, or through your sales reps or emailing. They come to your homepage and they don't know if what you're selling is right for them by what you have here. So I hope that was helpful. Um, okay. So if there's anybody else who wants to put their site uh, there up on the screen, I'm happy to do a quick uh, take on that. You'll also, by going through the magnetic messaging framework, the GPT that I trained, you'll also get uh, some of the similar points that I'm making out here. Hello, Kelly. And John is putting up exapron.com. Let's take a look at exapron. Exapron is in the house from John. Thank you, by the way. I, I'm not going to be harsh. I'm just, I want to be helpful here, not harsh. I really want to be helpful. And I think if you're taking the time to explore how you can do better in your business, uh, I, I honor you and I appreciate you. Um, Exapron doesn't seem to be resolving. Oh, there it is. Enterprise portfolio management. So enterprise portfolio project management. That should not be the headline of the site. That should be what we call an eyebrow. An eyebrow should be a single line at the top that tells Google what this is. You don't need to have that there. You need a headline here that calls your ideal people to do the thing that they need to do to be successful. You're not doing that here. This is all about your category, enterprise, portfolio, project management. That should be your eyebrow, not your headline. Um, call to action. Here's a video. I'm not going to click the video because I don't know uh, yet what you're selling. Uh, I think you're selling it to senior management, project managers, supervisors, industries. I don't know what you're selling. Here's how it works. Plans, schedule, execute, analyze, improve. So here's the thing. This is how Exapron works, but this is not how me, your customer, needs to take my journey to be successful. Where I'm, What is the first step in working with you? It's probably to schedule a discussion. Step two is probably to get a plan in place. Step three is probably to see some awesome benefit happen. So you want a three-step plan, not a five-step plan. This is not a plan your customer really needs to see. Maybe this plan goes in your proposal, but not on your website. Does that make sense, uh, John? It needs to be a plan from your customer's perspective, not from your perspective. Um, so schedule appointment. I like this, but if I click this and I get to a Calendly page, um, and I hope I do, or some kind of booking. No, it looks like it's taking me to a contact page. And by the way, it's taking too long, I'm not sure why. Yes, don't do a contact form, John, because I think 70% of all opportunities go to die in the back and forth of email saying, oh, thanks for contacting us. How does Tuesday at two o'clock work? Oh, no response. Oh, how does Thursday work? That doesn't work. And oh, I'm going on vacation. And tell me if you've experienced where deals go to die there. You want to have an embedded Calendly. So one click, they're picking the time and date, and then you're capturing that information. Plus, you're capturing other qualifying things. John, you got to do that. Totally got to do that. So I'm also missing here your credibility, your authority. I'm, I'm missing here. I'm getting social proof here. That's great. Uh, I am missing the plan section. And so there's, there's issues here. And you know, if you say, oh, well, we have that information on the solution page, or oh, we have that information on the training page, or whatever, I'll be like, come on. You know, you can't make this a treasure hunt for people. It all has to be on the homepage. 99% of the people visiting your, your business, because they hear about your business through the hard work that you're doing, are going to your homepage, and this should be your best sales presentation. And they're making a choice of whether they should bounce or whether they should contact. 
So you got to fix these things, John. I hope that was helpful, John. And, and we are running at time now. I want to thank everybody for coming to this masterclass. I really hope that you got some valuable nuggets of gold out of this. I know that I'm sharing with you stuff that I have learned from doing, uh, I guess, hundreds of messaging uh, websites and projects with companies and CEOs and big companies and small companies. So uh, you're learning from the fruit of all the work that, that I've done and we've done. So I hope this is super helpful. If it is, let me know. And uh, if you would like to book a session with me, please uh, snap this uh, QR code and book some time and let's get on the phone and fix this. Let's get it done and help you bring your innovation to the place that you know is gonna help your customers succeed as that's really what, what I'm in business to do is help, help you guys. So thanks so much, uh, Godspeed and um, speak to you guys soon. Absolutely, Paul, John, thumbs up. Let's get a heart, heart, pulsing heart. I can get the heart thing. Yeah, there we got it. We got it. Love you guys. Thank you so much, Kelly, John, for staying to the bitter end. The bitter end, Paul, Sri Devi, and Kim. See you guys.